I think we all are very much familiar with the term SMPS. SMPS is included in most of the electronics equipment, so it is very important topic for all the electronics learner. Today in this video, we will see in detail about SMPS including the flow and functionality of each and every component used in SMPS. So let us begin the explanation of SMPS circuit diagram in detail. This is the circuit diagram that we are going to understand in our today's video. This looks very complex when you see it like this. So, for better understanding, we will divide our circuit into different blocks. Our first block is input, source and over voltage production. Generally, the input supply voltage from our main supply is 220 volt AC. So, for the voltage greater than 220 volt, our circuit must be protected. In order to protect our circuit from over voltage, we have used a fuse and a metal oxide barrister. Let us assume that we are using metal oxide barrister of 275 volt. During the normal operation, when the input voltage is less than 275 volt, the resistance of MOB will be very high. So it behaves as open circuit and no current passes through MOB. But suddenly, when the input voltage is greater than 275 volt, the resistance of MOB decreases and current starts flowing through MOB. There is inverse relationship between resistance and voltage across MOB, which is clearly shown in the graph. When the high current flows through the fuse in the series, the fuse will blow and rest of our circuit will be protected. I have already made a video in over voltage protection only. If you want to watch in detail, you will get the video in the description box. And our second block is AC to DC conversion. We have used full bridge rectifier to convert AC to DC. The input to our full, full bridge rectifier is 220 volt AC and output is high volt DC which is nearly about 311 volt that is root 2 times the input RMS voltage. During the positive half cycle of the AC signal, the upper part is positive and lower part is negative. So the current passes through diode D1, charges the capacitor C1 and flows back to diode D3 to the negative terminal. Likewise, during the negative half cycle of the AC signal, the upper part is negative and the lower part is positive. So, the current passes through diode D2, charges the capacitor C1, flows back to diode D4 to the negative terminal. Our third block is Pi filter. Pi filter is passive filter which is composed of two filter capacitor namely C1 and C2 connected in parallel and inductor L1 connected in series between two shunt capacitor as shown in the figure. This slide shows the relationship between capacitive reactance and the frequency. From the equation and the curve, we are sure that the capacitive reactance is inversely proportional to the frequency. AC component generally has high frequency and consequently low capacitive reactance. Due to its low capacitive reactance, it acts like a short circuit for AC component, which means to say that capacitor allows AC to pass through it. DC components have zero frequency and infinite capacitive reactance. Due to its infinite capacitive reactance, it acts like an open circuit for DC component, which means to say that capacitor blocks DC component. This slide shows the relationship between inductive reactance and frequency. From the equation and the curve, we are sure that inductive reactance is directly proportional to frequency. AC components generally has high frequency and consequently high inductive reactance. Due to high inductive reactance, it acts like open circuit for AC components, 
which means to say that inductor blocks the AC components. DC components have zero frequency and consequently zero inductive reactance. Due to zero inductive reactance, it acts like short circuit for DC components, which means to say that inductor pass the DC component. Now we will see how the pipe filter functions in our circuit diagram. Capacitor C1 allows AC component to pass through it, whereas DC component continues its journey towards the inductor L1. The inductor permits the DC component to pass through it, whereas unbiased AC component is blocked. The second capacitor C2 allows the AC component that the inductor has unsuccessful to block. Thus, simply DC component will remain across the load. Our next block is switching circuit. Switching circuit is heart of any SMPS circuit. We have used TNY286 as our switching regulator in this circuit. You can get the detailed information about TN286 from this dataset. I have just highlighted the important things of TNY286 in this video. First pin of TN286 has two functions under voltage sense and enable input. This pin senses the under voltage condition through two external resistor R1 and R2. The circuit will still function if we do not connect this resistor, but the difference is just that we cannot sense the under voltage condition. The enable pin signal is generated on the secondary side by comparing the output voltage with the reference voltage. The enable pin signal is high when the output voltage is less than the reference voltage. Once the output voltage crosses the reference voltage, the enable pin is pulled down which finally stops the switching action. Our main task is to monitor the output voltage and stop the switching once the reference voltage is reached that is 5 volt in our case. This switching mechanism is controlled by IC TL321 and optocoupler. Looking at the function of IC TL431, it functions similar to Jenner diode, but we have more control on TL431 than Jenner diode. We are using TL431 of 2.5 volt, that means when the voltage at point A reaches 2.5 volt current start flowing from point B to C that means B and C become same point or short circuited. Now let us come to our circuit and see how the circuit behaves when the output voltage reaches the reference voltage that is 5 volt in our case. Once the output voltage reaches 5 volt this point B out will be 5 volt. This 5V is fed to point A of TL431 along with the voltage divider circuit. Since we have used same value of resistor R3 and R4 of 4.7 kilo ohm, the voltage at point A can be easily calculated using voltage divider rule. By using voltage divider rule, the point the voltage at point A is 2.5V. Once Point A of TL431 get 2.5 volt, point B and C get short circuited, meaning output point will be grounded. The positive terminal of LED in optocoupler is getting positive voltage from this point. Once the output reaches 5 volt, then negative terminal point of LED will be grounded. Then our LED will glow and transport the signal to transistor in the primary side. Once the LED glows, transistor will be on and point 3 and 4 of transistor will be short circuited. Enable will be grounded. These two enable are similar point so this point get 0 volt and switching is, switching is stopped when output reaches 5 volt. When the output voltage decreases, enable point will be high and again the switching begins. In the circuit, D2 is TBS diode and D3 is ultra-fast recovery diode. What is the use of TBS diode in our circuit? 
The transformer acts as a huge inductor. Therefore, during the switching of cycle, the transformer creates high voltage spikes. TBS diode is used to protect the circuit from such high voltage spikes. Now we will see the use of ultra fast recovery diode in our circuit. When the transformer is active, a current flows through the transformer and no current passes through the diode because it is inversely polarized. When the transformer is deactivated, the transformer tries to maintain the current flow and there is no way for the circulation of the current. A diode is placed parallel to the transformer. In this way, the current circulate through the diode and voltage flick are prevented from damaging the component of the circuit. We have used ferromagnetic transformer which converts high voltage AC to low voltage AC. It also provides galvanic isolation in our circuit. I have made the transformer symbol by myself so you might get confused over here. This is the primary side of the transformer and this is the secondary side of our transformer. This is simple snubber circuit. It consists of a small resistor in series with the capacitor. The basic principle of a snubber circuit is to regulate the dynamic voltage across the diode. The capacitor opposes the change of voltage across it by charging or discharging current. Snubber circuit consists snubber circuit limits the rate of rise of voltage or rate of fall of voltage across the diode. In order to limit the magnitude of the discharge current, resistor should be connected in series with the capacitor. This is our output pipe filter. The working of pipe filter is already discussed in our previous blog. So finally, we can get pure 5 volt DC output from this circuit. If you have any question, you can comment below and if you have liked this video, don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you.